Hi St. James, this is the sermon for the 24th of April 2022. We are in Easter time and we are preaching today and looking at John 20. It's John 20 and it's starting at verse 19 and it's going on to verse 29. I'm going to be looking at verse 19 to 23. So I'm just going to read that out because it's quite a long passage. So we're reading John 20, verses 19 to 23. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds on his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. But if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are with us. And we open our hearts to receive and to hear from you now. Amen. So, Francis of Assisi is famous for saying, whether he did or not, is up for question, but he's famous for saying, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words question I always have is, so what does that look like? I like chatting. So to preach the gospel without words, what does it look like? And what do you need in you to preach the gospel? How do you differentiate between living in the light of the gospel or or just good living? Morality and Christian life have got mixed up in the last couple of hundred years and being Christian has become being good, moral. Is that the gospel? In our Bible readings this week, Jesus appears to his disciples after defeating death and he breathes on them and he says, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. That's in John 20, 21. It's a motif that runs through the Bible. It starts maybe in Abraham. Abraham's told a similar thing in Genesis. In Genesis 12, verse 1, he says, I will bless you and make you famous, and you will bless others. It's the copying and a handing on of a message of blessings in Abraham's case and of forgiveness in ours. Handing things on um, makes us stand in a particular way. I think of a relay race. You've got one eye, I remember, held like this, one eye looking where you're going, you don't want to fall over your feet, and the other arm out, and you're looking for the person to give you that baton. As the Father is sending me, so I send you. In our passage, Jesus breathes on his friends, and he says, if you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive, they are not forgiven. God gives us the power to forgive. That baton is the power to forgive. And we receive it and we pass it. This is a huge statement. We remember the religious leaders on the day after Jesus heals the paralytic and he asserts, do you remember the man was handed down through the ceiling and Jesus says your sins are forgiven. And the religious leaders say, only God can forgive sins. Yet, this privilege and this power has been handed to us. If we look at this even within a Jewish context, it becomes even more outlandish and crazy. Rabbi um, Zer Hirsch Reinhab, he's the executive president of the Emeritus of the Orthodox Union. And he says, forgiveness must be earned. It must be deserved, it must be requested, and above all, it must be granted by the offended person. 
some of the statements quite simple to bring forward. So at all times we offend God. God forgives. When we injure his creation, we offend him. When we injure each other and ourselves, we offend him because he made us and he loves us. Everything we do against each other, we do against him. We cause harm. So he, of course, has the power to forgive. But in our passage, Jesus states that now we can forgive. He changes the very relationship between God and people. So do you know what is so very strange? Well, they didn't request it. The Holy Spirit and his power to forgive. They didn't deserve it. Uh, they didn't earn it. And yet they received it. So this statement and this interaction between Jesus and his followers seems amazing to us that the God of heaven and earth would give us this power of forgiveness. Epic. But when you look at it in a Jewish context, it is a gift that is, it's a, a target to be earned that is suddenly given. That's forgiveness. But then more than that, we get to give it to so I guess the question is, do we give it freely? Or do we make people earn it, deserve it? Paul reminds us that we all fall short and no one can earn forgiveness. It's a gift that we receive when we are open before God. So this is the first part of our relay. In order to live a life of forgiveness, we first need to catch that forgiveness. We need to receive that baton. In order to receive that forgiveness, we need to know that we need it. It sounds obvious, but it isn't always as obvious to us. Psalm 139 asks God to search me and know my heart. And Paul reminds the Christians in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15.3, For I handed on to you, as of the first importance, what I had heard, I, in turn, had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the, with the scriptures. Paul hands on to his followers what he has already received. You cannot hand on what you have not received. The gospel spread without words is us receiving forgiveness, receiving healing, without the need to earn, deserve or even request it. Receiving forgiveness is hard work, though. It means checking your motives, knowing that you need it. Especially, I find, when you think you've done a good thing. We need to be honest with ourselves and God about our motives, our motives of self-preservation, of fear, of the need for affirmation. And pain is a great motivator. It means receiving thoughts that God has about us rather than the ones that we so very readily accept from the rest of the world. You are not poor. You are not little. You are not worthless. You are loved. You are forgiven. Unless our eyes are on Christ, we have no hope of catching this baton of healing there. We're in danger of meeting a hurting world with hands full of our own hurt. So two main things can go wrong. One, we run off on our race without looking back. We hold our hand back for this baton, but we're not looking at Jesus, we're looking at the world. For all of us who are evangelists, this is a massive temptation. We wait a little and then we get so oh, impatient that we just run with empty hands. And actually then, as we're running in our trying to make help people to understand the kingdom of God. But we've got an empty hand. We've got no baton. We're not holding on to Christ's forgiveness. We're still actually trying to earn his forgiveness. We begin to work to make our hearts acceptable for him before we share. The message of God becomes all about our need to pay God, to earn and deserve God. So we cause untold pain to ourselves and to others. We find it hard to see ourselves at fault because that would mean that we are not close to earning God's love. 
flame flies everywhere. I often find that when I'm in a place that I blame others, which is just a reason to look closer at myself. We see this in our second reading in Acts 5. The High Council say to Peter and to the others, and you want to make us responsible for his death. You really think, but you killed him. You, you literally did it. Oh, if you're not to blame, then who is to blame? To that, Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit. Stop running. If you find yourself blaming others and spinning, stop. Receive the Holy Spirit. Hold out your empty hand and receive that baton of forgiveness. The second place it goes wrong is we hold out our hand and we receive baton of forgiveness and then we stop. We think it's too heavy. Or I really like it. I don't want to hand it on. We hold on to our baton. We accept forgiveness, but we don't pass it forward. But this is a huge problem. If we say, I'm not harming anyone. It's about me and God, isn't it? Relationship. Christianity is a relationship, not a religion. It's about me and God. I can hold on to my forgiveness. If I'm not forgiving anyone else, it's kind of their problem because they've done the wrong thing. It's about me and Jesus. But this is not right. It's a huge problem. We accept Christ as Lord of all, but we can't forgive. And in doing this, we cause a problem in our own forgiveness. And yet, we're not separate from those who've done us harm. Luke 11, verse 4. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. I, my forgiveness and the people who hurt me's forgiveness is tied up together. Christ forgives me as I give, forgive others. When we refuse to run with our baton, we sin. We offend God. The person who has sinned against us has only sinned against us out of their own weakness, same as we do. We become the ones who are holding back the kingdom of God. It affects our forgiveness. Actually, it makes us ill. We become disobedient to God. Matthew reminds us of Jesus' words, Freely you have received, so you freely give. The agenda of God is clear. Pass it on. I pass it to you. You don't deserve it. You haven't earned it. It's crazy to even think that you can receive it. But you pass it on to others. Don't be a wink link, a wink, a weak link. But keep your eyes on Jesus. Spend time each day in silence. Even five minutes. Settle yourself. Open your heart. Take a big breath. Try and find a still spot. And listen. Spend time in silence and let God show you what he is doing in your heart. If you find yourself blaming someone else, then take a look at yourself. Open yourself up to the forgiving love of God. You will find he says to you, peace be with you. And you know, if you're so full of that forgiveness, of that battle, that when you meet a hurting world, you will not blame it because you are here with forgiveness. You will not try and defend yourself because you know there's nothing to defend. You are forgiven. You will know your forgiveness. And then you can be a force for the kingdom of heaven. We receive and we give. You cannot give without receiving, and you cannot receive without giving. It's the kingdom of God, and we get to play. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your forgiveness. Forgiveness that makes us whole. Father, would you speak to us now? We still our hearts our bodies and we open to you 
would you equip us for the work you have given us to do? We answer to you, not religious leaders, not our friends or neighbours. Lord, in your mercy.